Welcome to another edition of Coding with Chapa. I'm Chapa. It's early in the morning. Got my coffee and let's code. So the first thing is we're going to do a right triangle, testing for a right triangle by inputting three different sides. And this one is to demonstrate the uh, static cast int along with the uh, math import, which is uh, the includes for the math module. And uh, we're also going to be using an if else if statement. And uh, it's, a, it's a simple little project, but it's one that you'll see a lot in uh, different programming classes. And uh, it's a good opportunity to, to learn a few different things. So the first thing you'll notice is on line 11, right here, I include the math library right here, CMath. And that's because I'm going to be using the, uh, the uh, power, um, the powers option. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start coding. The first thing we need to do is uh, we need to code our variables. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll, I'll explain it. All right, so I created the three, excuse me, nine variables. There's uh, the double side one, side two, side three, and then int, int side one, side two, side three, and then ABC. And I, I could reuse uh, these uh, first three variables here, but I do this so that it's easier to follow the logic because with the right triangle, we'll be using Pythagorean's theorem, Pythagoras' theorem. And um, so I want to use ABC just so that it's easier to follow the logic. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to determine which is the longer side. So a user is going to uh, input three different sides, but we need to know which side is going to be longest. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the code for the users to actually input um, the, th the three sides. Okay, so we have our cout function so, uh, to the console, and it says enter the links of the sides of the triangle, and then we're going to take three variables, the side one, the side two, side three, are the three inputs, and we're going to assign them to these three variables, side one, side two, side three, on line 21. And then, of course, we're going to end line. All right, so the next step is to find out which side is longer, and that's really simple. We're going to use an if-else-if statement. All right, so I got a little bit ahead of myself. The, the After taking the input of the three sides, the first thing we need to do on lines 25 to 27 is we need to do a static cast and convert them to ints in case the, they were using the decimals. And the reason for this is because of line three here. The equality uh, of a decimal number is machine dependent. And so we need to convert those to an integer. And the way we do that is we multiply each side by 100 and then we truncate. So uh, we take our original um, doubles, which are entered here. So somebody, somebody could enter a float. We multiply it by 100. And then we're going to use the static cast here to cast it, to cast whatever was entered to an integer. And that's going to give us int side 1, int side 2, and int side 3. All right, so now we're going to use our if statements. Okay, so now on lines 29 through uh, 34 here, we have the first if statement. And it's really simple. We're just going to test side 1 to see if... Uh, it's larger than the other sides. So we're going to test the first side. So we're going to say if side 1 is greater than side 2, and we have an end condition, side 1 is also greater than side 3, then we're going to assign side 1 to C. And then these two don't really matter. Um, I, I went ahead and put them in order. A is going to be side 2, B is going to be side 3. Because these two, A and B, can be backwards. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is we have to find the longest side. That is critical, because otherwise we can't plug these numbers into Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we need to create an else if statement, because there's three possibilities, right? Side one, side two, and side three. All right, so now we have the else if statement, and this time we're testing side two. So if side two is greater than side one, and, um, side 2 is greater than side 3, then side 2 is the longest side. So we're going to assign side 2 to C, and then again, A and B don't don't matter which ones they are. So, I mean, I just, just for simplicity, I keep them in order. So A is going to be side 1, B is going to be side 3. Now the next step 
is really, really simple because there's only one possibility left. If side one's not the longest side and side two's not the longest side, then logically side three must be the longest side. And therefore, on lines 42 through 47, we don't actually have to test anything because we tested for side one, and if it's the longest one, then we assign side one to C. We tested for side two. If side two is the, the longest one, then we assign it to C. And if that's not the case, then side three must be the longest side, and it just becomes side C. Side C. Okay, so now that we have uh, everything listed here, the only thing left to do is to plug it into the, the, uh, the formula, which is really, really simple. Okay, so on lines 49 through 57, all we did is we now test to see if it's a right triangle. So we have our, our, our formula, this is Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to check the power of C raised to the second power. And this is how we do that. We're, we need to say, uh, because the, the theorem says C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. If, if or you can say it the other way, if A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, then you have a right triangle. So all we're doing is we're saying, okay, C raised to the second power, A raised to the second power, and B raised to the second power. So if C raised to the second power is the same, and, and you can't say equal, but I like to say the same, is the same as A raised to the second power plus B raised to the second power, then you have a right triangle. Otherwise, you do not have a right triangle. So this code is now complete. And... Before I run this, I want to show you, uh, I want to emphasize the uh, formatting and uh, and the way that I, I want the code written uh, when you when you turn stuff into me. So uh, up here, I'd like your name. I like it to say what this is for. Usually, I also want the class in here too, so what class this is, and a description of what this thing does. And then we want our, uh, whatever the library should be listed, Usually just one spacing, uh, the namespace if we're going to use any, and then um, a space, and uh, and then your main function, and uh, and then the code. Now, the rule of thumb for the for comments is you should have some commenting up on top that explains what you know what this is and everything like I just described, and then unless um, you you need you unless your functions and this doesn't have any real functions other than the main. But unless your functions or your variables are not clear as to what's happening, you don't want to comment them because then it just becomes too much commenting. So, for example, here, th these are obviously variable declarations. I don't really need to say too much about that. This is obviously the intake. Don't need to say too much there. However, here, we kind of, we might want to say what's going on. I, I think it should be obvious we're casting these to ints, but, you know, I went ahead and put that in here just for your benefit. Now, this part here, I do want to say what's going on here. So I say, okay, I'm going to find the longest side and then assign it to C. Okay, so we know that right off the bat on line 28, and then that's what this chunk of code is going to do. Down here, we're testing to see if it's a right triangle. All right, done. No big deal, easy to do. And, uh, and then, of course, return int. So um, please pay attention to the way I, for I uh, comment and then also to my formatting as to when you have a space. So if you have... Every, uh, if you have a block of code that's related, don't do any spacing. Just keep it nice and simple. Uh, for example, this is all related, so um, it should all be uh, without spaces. Again, here, um, some people will put a space between this uh, closing bracket and the else. Uh, I like. I think it's cleaner to do it in this manner, and uh, and then a space after the block. So, for example, this is all related, so you don't do any uh, any spacing in there. This is not. This is a new one, so this one should have spacing. Um, and it's just for readability and also to your code just looks cleaner when it's done that way. All right, so um, this is it. I'll let you, I'll, I'll scroll through it and uh, let you examine it. And then, of course, so you can pause as you need to. I guess I should run this. So one moment. Okay, we're going to run this and see what happens. All right, so I do have some examples of right triangles here to test those numbers. And so those are both right triangles. And it says it's not a right triangle because 12, 3, 5, 12 is not a right triangle. Okay, so we test it when it's not. 
Now let's test one that is. We'll do 5, 12, and 13. And it is the right trend. So we know this works. It looks good. And uh, that's it. So happy coding.